Hello guys and welcome to the first video on the channel. So today's video, I'm gonna be going over the absolute basics for a complete uh, Blender beginner. So if that's you, then it's a perfect video for you. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So first thing we're gonna get into is how to move the camera. So unlike other softwares, it's a little complicated. To move the camera, if you have a mouse, you use the middle mouse wheel, press down, and you move your mouse around to move. If you don't have a mouse, you can use your um, trackpad and this right here, just click and drag one of these and this will also move the camera. I don't think it really matters which one you pick, but I think it just changes from what angle. Like it's easier to, to look at the top or the bottom using the Z. And that's how it changes. So next thing we're going to get into is movement of your object. So let's say I wanted to move this cube right here. I'd have to click on it, so left click on the cube, and then press G on the keyboard, and that way you can move it around, move it to the left, move it to the right, up, down, all that stuff. If you want to be more precise with your movement, you can press G, and then, depending on what axis you're trying to move it on, so the green is the Y axis, the red is the X axis, and uh, you can't see it, but it's usually blue right here, uh, that would be the Z axis, so if I want to move one meter on the X axis. I press G and then press X and then type out one. And that way it'll move one meter. Let's say I wanted to move it 10 meters. G X 10. So let's say, so that's how you do this. But let's say I wanted to move it the other direction. I could just press backspace, get rid of that, and I press negative 10. And that's going to go the opposite direction 10 meters. So same thing with uh, the other things. So let's say I wanted to move. Uh, on the z-axis, so up or down, there's G, Z, and 10, and now you can't even see it, but uh, let me zoom out a little bit, G, Z, and then 10, boom, moves up, so also, if you want to um, move something, let's say I move it like this, but and I press OK, but now it's going to be here, in this position where I put it, so Let's say you don't want this to happen. Let's say you move something. Um, so right here, I just pressed Control Z. That's so why I moved it back here. But let's say I move it over to the Y axis. I mean, I move it on the Y axis, and I'm like, Nah, I don't want it to be here. I can right click for it to go back to where it was before. So let's say I move it over here, and now I'm about to move it up. But I don't want it to be going up. I want to go down instead. So let's say I have it on the Y axis, and I want it to go up right so I'm moving it up and uh, I'm like nah I don't really like this I can just right click real quick and then move it down instead or uh, move it whatever way I want to so now we're gonna get into scaling so it's very similar to um it's very similar scaling is very similar to movement so instead of pressing G though you would press S on the keyboard and that way if you don't press any of the axes it just scale all together uh, let's say I want to move it on the, let's say I want to scale it on the x-axis, press x, scale it that way, z, that way, y, that way. I can do the number thing as well, s, x, 10, uh, so yeah. And then the last thing is rotation, very similar to all of them. It's a rotation, uh, so it may be a little more complicated as it's just hard to get the angles right. So I'd recommend using the numbers specifically for rotation as it's most important. So if I wanted to move this at a um, 90 degree angle, on the x axis, press x, and then press 90. Uh, one quick note, I'd recommend that you never really use free rotation or scaling or whatever you're doing. Because there's really no um, organization to it. Like you're just kind of randomly moving it. There's not really a point. So, if you're ever to move it like 90 degrees, make sure you're pressing the axis you want to move it along first, so you don't have to like restart or whatever. So, like, if I were here and I didn't press X yet, so this is when I press X, it goes 90, it moves. But if I press R and I didn't press the X, I just press 90, it's gonna move all wonky. So I don't think you want that. But next, I'm gonna get into um, edit mode. So to get into edit mode, you need to press Tab on your keyboard, and you see everything changes like this. And to get out of it, you also press tab, or you can go right here, which is object mode. Click on this, and switch to edit mode. Uh, don't worry about the rest of these right now. 
to be honest, some of these I don't even know they do. It's stupid. But uh, so go to edit mode. Right now it's in vertices select. So these little dots right here, these are called vertices. So um, let's say you want to click and drag them, press G to move. That's for everything. If you want to move something, press G and then you move it. So like this move the vertices. Um, you can't really scale vertices. Rotate, you can't rotate them either. But uh, next, so um, I didn't get into this before, but there's three different modes you can use when you're in edit mode. So, this is the point of edit mode, so you can use these three modes and a bunch of these things, but these are a little more complicated uh, to get into in another video. So, I wanted to uh, change it, but these vertices, this isn't exactly how I want to change it. So, there's these other two methods right here these are the edges, and these are the faces. So, it's the FX edges. And I want to move it to be a more sharper degree. So if I press this and press X, I can move it so it'll be sharp. Also, quick note, if you press one of these, you can um, pick a viewpoint. So let's say I want to view it like this perfectly. Press Y and boom. Now it's a 2D image basically. But it's, it's easier to tell what's going on when you have it in this. Also, uh, like you saw right there. I can't press the angle that's right here since I oh, I can't see this angle technically. But if I press it before I press this, I can move it still. I can move it like that. All right. So next, we're gonna get into faces. I think faces might be the most important. Faces and vertices, edges are also important, but you don't use them as often. So for faces, um, these are the faces, as it's the name implies. Um, so you can move around like this. Uh, you can scale so let's say I want to like make something real quick I could scale this and then um, no extrude is also something I want to teach you guys it's very important um, simply press E and this way you go up or you can go to the right or Bruh. Whatever, left Bruh. those kind of things so extrude is very important if you want to like add more parts to your cube so let's say I added this and then made it smaller Another extrude, keep going up and up and up, and then stop right here. So, I don't know what this is, but you get what I'm trying to show you. So, those are most of the very basics for Blender. Um, another thing I'd like to teach you guys is to add. So, if you press this button right here, you can add a mesh, which is basically the normal objects, these other things. Again, these are like the more complicated things, you'll get into those later. So, you can either press this to add, and then press mesh, then add one of these. These are the shapes that are offered. Or, you can press Control A, like it says right here, this is the shortcut. I'm um, Shift A, my bad. <laughs> press Shift A, add mesh, and let's say we'll add another cube again. So, really quickly, I'm going to go through different types of meshes there are. So, there's right here, you have the cube. Um, also, to get rid of something, in this you have to press delete rather than backspace backspace I won't do nothing but you press delete gets rid of it so I put Q we have a plane this is just a 2d uh, flat plane and um, let's say we go into edit mode right going to face select and like we taught you earlier you can use extrude to make a shape so that's just a quick side note so the next thing we have on the list of circles, I'm not going to really get into circles because it's a little more different and complicated than other things. But uh, next we have a UV sphere. This right here is a sphere that has a lot of um, faces. So let's right, right here into edit mode, press face select. You can see this one has a lot of faces. But um, if you went to this one, the ISO sphere, you can see it has a lot less faces. However, it's still a sphere. Um, another side note I'd like to get into, let's say I press on um, this UV sphere right here, it has a lot of faces, and you might notice this pop up right here, add UV sphere, if I go into this, I can take up the amount of segments it has, basically making it more detailed, so let's say I take this instead of 32 to 64, and so now you can tell there's an obvious difference in the amount of um, faces, or segments as they're called, but um, you can also notice that this is now gone and the reason for that is because I clicked off of the pop-up menu so let me delete that real quick and make a new UV sphere now this is right here I click off and it's gone just keep in note that you have to have all of these settings
correctly before clicking off like there I just automatically clicked off on accident but um so open the CV sphere there's also rings and stuff but this uh, once again more complicated stuff not for this kind of video um here you go got a cylinder same thing right here add cylinder um a cone and um a torus a donut basically Alright, so that's all for today's video. I know there's a lot of things you may be asking, questions. It's a very new channel, so the goal is to grow as fast as I can. But um, that's all for today's video. Thank you guys for watching, and see you next time. Thank you very much.